What's up friends, Durosai here. Hope you guys are staying creative. So I know I usually make minimal house tutorials, but this one's gonna be geared more towards techno. So apologies to my minimal house viewers out there. There's more for you guys coming soon. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to make a grungy, textury, deep techno baseline. I thought that the idea of the typical, you know, put a reverb on a kick, filter it out, that sort of rumble baseline concept was just overused and you just hear it everywhere. So I wanted to expand upon that and add some more flavor to it and just make it different. So before we get into it, I'd really appreciate if you could like this video, subscribe to the channel, check out some of my music and follow me on Instagram. All right, let's get into the video. All right, so let me play the bass line that I'll be walking you through. So this whole thing just stems from a single 909 sample. Um, what I'll do is I'll turn off all the plugins and then just turn each of them back on and just show you uh, why I used them. So here's the original. Just standard 909 kick. I have this going through a frequency shifter just to shift it into the key of my track. Then I got it going through drum bus, which is gonna fatten it up. That's just adding the harmonic distortion and weights to the kick. That's going through our comp just to tame that kick a bit. Um, then we got it going through isotope trash, which is doing the heavy lifting of the distortion. Isotope trash is an amazing plugin. I love this thing. Um, you can have you can set like different sort of uh, ways to distort it. So you, I have it set on a multi-band distortion. So I'm distorting everything below one and a half k differently than everything above it. So below it, I have it going through this smooth overdrive. As you can tell, that's that's doing a lot of distortion. There's a bunch of different distortion algorithms in here. Um, so I would suggest just, if you have this plugin, just play around with all the different types of distortion and find something that you like. That's pretty much how I use this thing. I just uh, see what sounds good. So the reason I'm uh, splitting this distortion is just because I want the low end of the kick to be uh, distorted differently because that has all the sub frequencies. And then I have everything above one and a half K just to add some bite to it. So I have the um, everything above one and a half K going through this tube drainer distortion, which sounds like this. Turn it off. So that's just, you know, that's just adding that sort of top end air to the kick drum. And then I have this at about 75% uh, wetness on the mix. Next, we have that going through an EQ to take out some of the, the mid frequencies that the distortion is bringing out. And I got it going through drum bus again. Cause you know, gotta get that kick super fat. Um, then I have that going through another EQ, this time to cut out some of the low mid frequencies that's being brought up by drum bus. So now it's starting to sound a lot cleaner. And then lastly, that's going through our comp just to add the final layer of compression. some pretty light compression, about 2 dB. You want a slow attack, um, relatively quick release. Uh, you don't wanna completely just squash the transient of the kick, you want that transient to come through and then the compressor to um, duck the level. So that is the kick. So now what I'm doing here is I essentially put this through a reverb. My reverb of choice is Valhalla Vintage Verb. So all I do is I just you know slap this at the end of the channel Turned up the mix, turned up the decay. You're gonna get something like that. So then what I do is I record that into a separate channel. 
So that's where we have our base, um, what do you call it, our base track. So again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna turn off all these plugins. All right, so we have our reverb kick here. That has our frequency shifter. So the reason I have this again is because I added this frequency shifter after the fact. So um, if I, I didn't record this reverb kick with the frequency shifter on the original kick drum, so that's why they're located in both channels. All right, so the first thing um, is just filter it down. So this is kind of the typical process when you're doing like a normal reverb kick baseline. Just getting the sub frequencies have that going through a utility. So this utility is linked with LFO. And so this is gonna give a syncopated sort of rhythm to the baseline. So I have the LFO playing 16th notes. It's mapped to the gain of the utility. And this is uh, doing this sort of this downward slope um, shape, which is kind of like a saw wave kind of. So it's just, ducking the levels at every 16th note. And so I have it set so it's about 30% on the low side, which means as you can see here, it's going down to about like negative 12 dB. If I, if I set this to zero, it's gonna duck this all the way down to zero dB and then, or sorry, negative like infinity dB and then bring it all the way up to zero. But it's just like, that's just too much, uh, I guess like percussiveness you could say. So I have it as 30, 50. And then I have that going into Isotope Trash. So we have our percussiveness, and then that's going into this. So clearly Isotope Trash is again doing the heavy lifting of distortion. So let me walk you through what's going on here. So on here I have this, you have, I, well, I have two stages of distortion here, because you can have like this dual stage um, distortion level. So on the first stage I have this mirror overdrive algorithm. So that's just cranking it into the <laughs> into the distortion unit. And then I have it going through the sandpaper distortion uh, algorithm. So this is adding the real top end grit. And I have nothing on the other band. So I'm just distorting everything below uh, like 2K pretty much. Again, like I said, I'd experiment with all these uh, distortion algorithms and just see which one sounds the best. I just click through them. And yeah, Sandpaper and Mirror Overdrive, in my opinion, sounded the best for this. Um, so moving on, just got that going through utility just to bring down the level because this is adding so much gain to that, um, that reverb kick. And then I got it going through another sort of LFO utility combo doing the same thing for the percussiveness of the baseline, because essentially when it's going through isotope trash, you're losing some of that um, rhythmic element of the bass. So I'm just bringing it back, turning it off. This one's not going as hard. I, as you can see, I only have it at 40% on the low side, still keeping 50% on the high side. All this means, the 50% here just means that the top end is just bringing it to zero dB. Next, I got that going to our base. And so all our base is doing is bringing back all those really low sub frequencies. Um, Cause we don't really have much of a, like a bottom end. So I needed to bring that back. So I have sub base set to 50 Hertz and then, you know, intensity, negative 1.5 dB. I'm just playing around with this just to make sure it's not too crazy, but you know, you still want that nice sub for people to feel in the club. Um, this amp is actually not doing anything because uh, I didn't have it turned on. It just made everything too crazy, honestly. Uh, then it's going through this thing called X-Click. Click is this uh, plugin by Waves, and all it is is it's taking out some of those clicks and pops that you're hearing that's essentially being caused by the crazy amount of distortion coming from Isotope Trash. So this is just taming some of the, uh, yeah, that grit and the high frequencies. So without it, it sounds like this. And then with it. Then we 
we've got to go through EQ8. So I have a massive high shelf up here doing a pretty crazy boost above um, for everything above about like 5k. So that's adding that textury top end grit that I like in the bass lines. And then just cutting out some of these uh, mid frequencies. There's, there's a lot of mids in this bass, so I'm just making room for other stuff in the track and just to clean it up overall. And then lastly, going through Kickstart, which is just a sidechain plugin. So I'm just sidechaining the uh, bass to the kick drum. Now we have the pumping effect. And then the sound shifter is not doing anything. I was just playing around with possibly messing around with the, sh the pitch of the, uh, the sort of bass line, but I wasn't really finding anything good. So I'm not actually using that plugin. So now with the kick. Um, and then lastly for the bass line, I just have these toms. This is just kind of playing this offbeat pattern just to complement the percussiveness of the bass line. So this is giving another sort of rhythmic element to this whole uh, bass groove. I have this other tom layer in here as well, but um, I don't know. I'm not really sure if I'm really going to use that, to be honest. Just this really distorted 909 tom. You know, it kind of sounds cool when it's just only the bass is playing, but it kind of gets lost in the mix when like everything is going on. So I don't, I don't really know if I'm going to keep this second tom layer, but I might, who knows. So yeah, that's how I made this uh, really grungy, textury, deep techno bass line. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, really appreciate it. Share this video because that helps me a lot. And as always, thanks for watching it and I'll catch you next time. Peace.